In most cases, when you think of caulking, you think of a painter because a painter really knows how to put caulking on because the caulking makes his work look better. And if he's dependent on a caulking job done by somebody like mm, a carpenter, there's a chance that no matter how well he applies the paint, the caulking is going to be substandard. Now in some cases, in fact often with hardy board, with the fiber cement siding, the siding crew will apply the caulking as they go. They're up on the ladder, they're up on the scaffolding, they're right there, they made the cut, maybe the cut's a little gappy. In some cases it's in their interest to caulk the job as they go because that way also the building's waterproof when the siding is installed. Now one of the things that makes this a really big caulking job is the size and the number of penetrations. We've got a lot of doors and windows and corbels and rakes and, and eave vents and any time there's a, there's a penetration of any kind in the exterior envelope like for instance right here where this lap siding runs into the side of this door trim or at the head or around a light fixture where a light fixture penetrates or where the eave blocks are bounded by the roof decking on one side and the siding on the bottom. Anywhere there's an interruption to the lap siding is a place for water to get into your building. So that is going to take a carefully applied bead of caulking to stop the water, stop the bugs, stop the wind, and receive the paint. So every caulking job is different. Every standard gap that you're filling is different. And you'll work into that through the day. You'll get the feel of how big an opening you can work with. But in general, I like to clip off at about a 45 degree angle just the end of the tube and then I clip off the tip so it doesn't leave that little plastic feather so I've got a chamfer that comes out and kind of a little square end right above it. I would say I shoot for oh that's about a sixteenth of an inch, a little more than a sixteenth, maybe three thirty seconds, it's certainly not an eighth. It's small. It will just barely receive the wire that's on lots of caulking guns for breaking the foil at the end of the of the tube which Big Stretch doesn't have, but it's just a little opening that if I need to enlarge is easy to enlarge. With most paintable caulkings, you're going to have to have a bucket of water and something to do the cleanup as you go, including to strike off the bead after you've laid it in there with your finger, if that's what you're doing. For years, I've just used an old piece of a t-shirt and it works all right. Lots of pro painters just use a, you know, a piece of fabric. But Nate's friend Rich dialed him in on using a piece of a sponge, so I cut off the end of a grout sponge. I've been using that, and i got to say, I really like it. We're not going to subject you to watching every inch of a mile of caulking be run into this project, but you'll see enough of it to have an idea that you'll be able to figure out how to use a caulking gun to fill almost any joint that you come up to. And there are things that we'll show you someday about rope caulk and, you know, backer rod and those kinds of things for really big joints. I'm coming up to a pretty good sized joint here, but what you're going to realize is that the tip of your caulking gun is much like an anvil. There are several shapes here that can be used in different ways, cut off at different angles, cut off at different sizes, put the back cut on there differently. You'll get the feel of it, and it is all a function of the temperature of the caulking, the temperature of the day, how quickly the caulk skins over, but you'll figure it out. It's not rocket science, but in a lot of ways, it's pleasant work. I mean, you walk up to a house like this and you say, wow, do I want to caulk that? No, but the fact is, it's quiet. There's no air compressors running. There's nobody yelling at anybody. There's kind of a zen. You can listen to a podcast if you want. It's good duty on a day like this. And I think I'll probably have four or five days spent, you know, walking around and moving around and, and making the siding job on this house look like a million bucks. And there's its own reward in doing that, right? On this lap siding, it's important that you're pushing the caulking back in there. So at the top, I kind of wait for a little bit and let some disappear up underneath that. And then start coming down. You're trying not to apply it so fast that it bubbles up around the edges of the tip. You don't want to be leaving a whole bunch of material to be struck off. And as you go slowly, it has a tendency to push it further back into the joint. The trick is to balance how fast you're feeding the material out as you squeeze with how fast you're moving the tip. If you move too fast, like this, you don't get it adhered to both sides. If you move too slow, like this, 
you get way more material than you need. So it's a it's kind of the practice of getting the the travel balanced against how much material is going in there. Now I I often like to strike this. See, I can take that extra material and kind of push it back in. So it's not a problem. I kind of prefer striking this uphill because it pushes the material up into the bottom side of that joint. And then I take my wet sponge and I just kind of, it's kind of like a broom on concrete, right? You're kind of brooming the caulk joint. If you're having trouble getting a nice caulk joint, let me give you a few items to check on, sort of like troubleshooting. Item 1. Do yourself a favor and get a good quality caulking gun. If you spend a buck eighty-nine on the gun, it's not going to matter how much you spend on the caulking, you're going to have a fight on your hands. Item 2. Make sure you're caulking. The stuff in the tube itself is not too hot. If it is, the caulk will come out way too fast. It'll be too runny to control, and it will get everywhere except where you want it. Now this can happen easily in a short period of time, like if the tube was left sitting in the sun on the seat of the truck for a few minutes. It doesn't take long. Conversely, if the caulking is cold, too cold, too thick, you might need to compensate by cutting a larger hole in the end of the tube, which brings me to item Three. I already mentioned that cutting off the end of the tube is important. It's really important. You don't want the opening in the end to be too big. You don't want it to be too small. It needs to be just right. And the right size really depends on what you're caulking. If you have big joints to fill, you're going to need a bigger opening. Now cut it off at an angle, cut it off square, experiment a little bit with different sizes or shapes in the way you cut the tip off if you're having trouble. Now just two more things. First, make sure if you're a beginner that the caulking you are using is water soluble. Don't start in with a silicone or a butyl caulk unless you know exactly what you're up against because you can't just wipe that stuff away with a wet sponge. And don't underestimate the importance of selecting the right brand of caulking. Talk to painters. Talk to somebody at a pro desk. See what's popular in your area and don't be tempted to try and save money on this. Spend the money on the nicer caulking to ensure that it will last a long, long time and not just be an ongoing maintenance item for you or someone else. Now the last tip is to be a little careful when you're wiping the caulking with a sponge or a rag after it's in place. Or at least be aware and don't forget that you're removing the caulk when you do this. It's a lot like grouting a tile floor, right? Don't get so carried away that you wipe all of your caulk right back out of the joint. Think of the sponge or the rag as a tool for cleaning up the edges, 
feathering out the transition from caulking to no caulking, and just generally getting rid of the mess more than anything else. Now there's one more thing, and it might be the most important part of this video. There are mindless jobs in construction, and caulking is one. What I mean is, there's not much to figure out, there's no measurements to play with, no plans to read, no instructions to give, there's just the race against your previous best effort, right? The hunt, or the desire to do a better job in less time. There is, however, the mental challenge of keeping your mind on the task at hand well enough to do a good job and find some other way to use your extra mental bandwidth productively throughout the day. And what most people do, and the only thing that was available until recently, was just to turn up the music, zone out. Just let the day fade away and get in the truck and go home with nothing to show for it but the time toward your paycheck. But nowadays, there are a lot of much better options. Maybe instead of listening to music, you listen to an ebook. You've always meant to read it, you know you should read it, and now you have time to listen to it. Or a worthwhile podcast. Or you could listen to scriptures or an inspiring speaker. You know, I don't know what you choose to do with these hours that could be spent to learn something. But you might go so far as to download an app so you can learn a foreign language. There are amazing opportunities to use moments like this in ways that will change you forever if you want to be changed. So maybe a couple of days or weeks or even years spent caulking siding could prepare you for a future that right now you can't even imagine. I think I've put 34 tubes of caulking on this house in the last week and a half or so. I think I've spent actually about 25 or 28 hours putting the caulking on. That's a lot of caulking. And I started this process as a low, medium grade caulker, and now I would say I have squeezed my way all the way up to a solid, medium grade caulker. And, you know, one of the things as I think back over the years at the caulking I've put in, I realize that about nine times out of ten I leave the caulking to the painter, because the painter's the guy that makes the product shine and he's utterly dependent on how good a job the caulker did, and so it all kind of goes with that one craft most of the time. But it looks pretty good, or it's going to when it's, when it's all done. I'm going to go back on some of the caulk joints. All caulking shrinks as it dries, right? And so some of the caulk joints that are right at eye level that have receded back into the joint a little bit, I'm going to hit with a little skim coat, shine it up one more time, get it nice and plump and out to the edge. But in general, it's been a pleasure. It's nice to come behind um, Nathan and Kenny and Jim and see the work they did. They did good. I made their work look better. That's how the finish works, right? I mean, a little putty, a little paint makes a builder what he ain't. You've probably heard me say that before, and I have a deeper appreciation for it now. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman, and keep up the good work. <laughs>